The other day, my wife, Barbara, she's a psychiatrist, and I were sat in the kitchen discussing our plans for the day, you see. Uh, with particular regard to um, the contents of our dinner, you know. And Barbara said, why don't I make a stew? You know, we can slow cook it all day and it'd be very delicious in the evening. I said, marvellous. And I said, well, can we have dumplings? And she said, that's a good idea. Except I don't have one of the key ingredients for dumplings. And I said, well, if you make me a list, I'll go to the supermarket and buy it, you see. She said, that's a good idea, you see. So she made me a list with the item on it. Anyway, so I set off for the supermarket, you see. And I went to that stripey one. You know, the one that employs all the, all the dwarfs, you know. And they have that slogan, don't they, you know, every little person helps. Nobby Nibbler asked me, was it the place where they all wear these badges, happy to help, you see. And I said, no, 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 no. That's only one of them, you see. There's happy to help, uh, sleepy to help, sneezy to help, uh, doc to help, uh, you know. But you don't get dopey to help, he's bloody useless. Anyway, so I walked in there and I realised I'd lost my list, you see. Oh, you know. Anyway, I was wandering around thinking about what I had to do and I was approached by one of them and he was forced, he was doc to help, you see. He was very efficient because he has a PhD. Anyway. So he said, how can I help you, sir? So I said, uh, sewage. And he said, no problem, sir, follow me, you see. So I followed him. down this aisle, you see, and on the end of the aisle was a computer, you see, on, on a little table, you see. Anyway, so he started typing away, you know, and got me onto the expeditiously.com uh, website. And before I knew where I was, I was on a container ship, you see, with lots of containers and, and, a, and a group of Korean gentlemen who were very kind. I said they couldn't speak English. Anyway, that wasn't a problem. They kept giving me, you know, rice and noodles and stuff, and doing this gangnam style dancing business, you know, which was uh, very entertaining. So I'm sat there on this, you know, steel thing, with all these steel boxes on, and these Koreans, doing gangnam style. It was quite nice, you know, it was pleasant weather. Anyway, after a while, I thought I'd better phone Barbara, you see, um, just to let her know that I might be home a little bit late, but that, you know, anyway, so I did. And she said, well, what do you mean you'll be late? I said, well, you know, I'm, got a, I'm in a bit of a situation, you see. And she said, where are you? And I said, I think I'm just going past Gibraltar. I said, but I'll get off at some point, you see, and I'll come home immediately, or as soon as I possibly can, you see. Anyway. Fortunately, the ship docked at Malta, you know, and I had to spend a couple of days there uh, to get on the next flight, you see. And while I was there, I was on my best behaviour, you see, because you know what, you don't want to make the Maltese cross. Anyway, I got home eventually. Barbara was somewhat disappointed. But I didn't manage to get the ingredients for the dumpling. When I was a student, I had a friend, you know, he was a bit sort of uh, spacey, you know, a bit, not Kevin spacey, um, you know, sort of like uh, away with the fairies, he was a bit kind of on his own sort of gender planet thing. He was doing a degree in politics, you know. Anyway, but he was very friendly, you know, and, and, he, and sometimes he was even complimentous, but not very often. Anyway, so he was sat, you know, in the library, you know, doing some bit of, bit of work and that. And he said, uh, well, you know what, why don't you come over tomorrow night, you know, we'll have a bit of, come over to my place, we'll have a bit of a chilling time, you know, you know, 
have us some, have some, you know, sort of like a uh, thing, chilling time and stuff. You know, if you bring over a joint we can share, we'll have a really nice time, you see. I said, that's a very good idea, you see. So anyway, so I went off. And the next morning I went to the supermarket and bought myself a bacon joint, sit round to his place, you see. I thought he would, you know, a bit of gammon, nice stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, I thought he'd like that, you know, a nice bit of meat. So that evening I went round, you know, knocked on the door, came round and said, how are you doing? You're said, very well. I said, I brought you this joint, you see, so we can have a really nice time. And he, was, he looked very disappointed. I mean, you know, he looked at it and was like, yeah, what's this? He said, you know, I said, it's a bacon joint. He said, people don't smoke these. I said, I think you find they do, actually. Anyway, he went off and was disappointed in the corner of the room for a bit. And in the meantime, I put the joint in the oven, you see. And then knocked together, a, you know, a few, uh, you know, a few chips and some eggs and a, a few beans, you see. And then I sort of said, you want to have it? Anyway, so he has some of this. And he thought it was absolutely marvellous, you know. He said he'd had a road to Damascus moment, you know, in terms of the possibilities, you see, of um, pig-related... Uh, dinner portions, you know. Anyway, he sort of turned around his life, you see. And after he did his degree in politics, he went off to, um, you know, um, Ascombe Ryan Agricultural College to do a postgraduate diploma in pig farming. And then he opened his own pig farm uh, somewhere in East Yorkshire. And I've never heard from him since. The other day I was on my phone, you see, uh, to my friend in New York, you know, Barb, B-A-R-B, -B, Barb. Anyway, he was, he was chatting away, you know, over in New York, or over in Nick's, or over in Jets, or over in Madison Square Garden, blah, blah, whatever. Central Park. I'm sorry, I live in New York, so we've got a, a big park, thank you very much. Anyway, so, he said, I'm coming over to London, you see. I'm flying over to London, to come to the UK you know, um, for a bit of business. But I've got a few spare days, you know, afterwards, before I fly back, you see. So, well, that's nice. What do you want to do? So, well, what really interests me is, is the broads, you see. I want to come around and look at the broads. Because I love broads, you know. I do. I love looking at these broads, you know. They're marvellous. I thought, well, okay, fair enough. Anyway, so he comes to London, you know. He gives me a call from London, when he, you know, after his business dealings. He says, Hugo, so I'm in London, you know, and, you know, I, I, I've had a lot of, the broads here are great, you know. Anyway, I want to, do you know anywhere else in England where there's some, some really great broads, you see? So I said, um, you could try Norfolk. So he said, how do I get there? I said, oh, I think you go to Liverpool Street and get a train to Norwich. So he did. The next day I got a phone call. He wasn't very happy. The other day I was sat at home doing a bit of administration, you know, for my uh, thing. Anyway. I've got one of these smartphones, you know, when you charge it overnight sometimes, uh, it overcharges, you see, and the battery gets very hot. Which, during cold weather, is quite a bonus, you know, because it warms up your, you know, hands and whatever. Anyway, so I was sat there doing my admin, you know, and I felt this sort of sensation in my trousers, you know. And then I started to smell a bit of sort of smouldering. And I thought, oh my God! Anyway, so I phoned Barbara, my wife. She was at work, you know. She's a psychiatrist. And I said, Baba, I'm in trouble here, you know. My trousers are on fire. He said, oh, Hugo, you romantic, you. But I'm very busy now. I can't come home, you see. I said, no, it's not a grand metaphor. I'm not, I'm not making some sort of romantic gesture that I want you to come home and immediately, you know, do saucy bonking. I've actually literally got my trousers on fire. He said, well, take them off then. I didn't know quite how to take this anyway. So I took them off and found I was only a little bit singed down the bottom, you know, area. 
but I survived. And eventually I took my phone out and took the battery out. And it calmed down. But I want someone to warn everybody, you know, about the uh, nature of smartphones. And the possibility of uh, singeing your important business. Thank you.